In this video, we are gonna look at one of the most consistent and common questions that comes our way. Is this rattlesnake a Mojave or a Western Diamondback? And how do you tell the difference between these two very similar looking rattlesnakes? So before we start looking at pictures of snakes, we need to prepare ourselves mentally to be able to do this. It's not that it's difficult, it's that there is some sort of cultural importance, some kind of social pull that leads people the wrong way a lot of times. That might be because the Mojave rattlesnake or the Mojave green rattlesnake is something that people fear, has this reputation for being this really hyper aggressive snake. There's a lot of reasons for it, but there's something about it that makes people want to believe a snake is a Mojave rattlesnake until proven otherwise. A quick example of that are black-tailed rattlesnakes in Sedona. Lots of people take pictures of what they believe are Mojave green rattlesnakes in Sedona and then attribute a bunch of different behaviors to the snake that didn't really happen, but they did perceive them. And when they are told that the snake that they photographed was not actually a Mojave green, but the mild-mannered black-tailed rattlesnake, they're upset about it. There's a lot of pushback about it. It seems to be very important that that, that snake is a Mojave rattlesnake. People do not like when the snake ends up not being a Mojave. And we have lots of examples of this misidentification of Mojaves based on this kind of mythological status that they have in our culture as these hyper-aggressive monsters. The stories seem to be better. I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but we have so much evidence of it that it can't be ignored. So if you don't feel like you are subject to this, especially if you're new at this, hear me out anyway. Before you try to identify the snake, clear the slate. Instead of looking at it and saying, I think this is a Mojave rattlesnake until we can look at features and either confirm or deny that fact, that pre-existing fact, look at it like this. I don't know what that snake is. I'm gonna look at these features and decide what it is from there, including that I don't know what it is even after that. Those are all acceptable answers. By not having a preconceived notion of what you think the snake is that you're trying to work from, your odds of identifying it properly are gonna go way up. So again, before we start looking at snakes, here are some things that you can do to broadly categorize what you're looking at to tell if it's likely a Mojave or a Diamondback. By starting out that way, instead of just looking at the features, you can take a big chunk out of the possibility right off the bat. So the first is just to ask yourself if you live in a place where Mojave rattlesnakes even live. There are lots of range maps on the internet, and I think there's a lot of confusion about how those range maps are formed. So before you blurt out, snakes don't read books, um, you should know that those range maps are pretty accurate for the most part. There are some surprises that pop up out there, but it's usually pretty big news in our little community of snake nerds when that does happen. And there are a lot of reasons why snakes live in the places that they do and don't live in places where they don't. So if you have a range map handy for Western Diamondback or a Mojave Rattlesnake and it doesn't show that they live where you saw the snake, then overwhelmingly the odds are that it is not that animal. Another sweeping categorical filter you can use to differentiate between a Western Diamondback and a Mojave Rattlesnake is just the habitat where it is found. These two snakes occupy slightly different niches, so there's some overlap to where you can see both in the same places, but usually one might be dominant while the other one is in fewer numbers. So by just looking at the surrounding territory, you can start to get an idea of the likelihood of the snake that you think it is being what you think it is. Western Diamondback rattlesnakes are generalist species that can be found in any habitat type within its range. They can be high up in mountains and rocky areas, low, flat, without any rocks, down to sea level up to thousands of feet, including the entirety of the Mojave rattlesnake range and urbanized places like parks and backyards. Mojave rattlesnakes, on the other hand, are a little more specialized. They like flat areas, grasslands, uh, the Colorado River subdivision of Sonoran Desert, the Mojave Desert, they are not a fan of mountains. In fact, if the place that you're at, if you look around where you see a snake and you could describe that terrain as mountainous, it's very unlikely that you are looking at a Mojave rattlesnake. And the last filter is a negative filter and you should remove these and not consider them as part of your identification process. These are color and attitude. A lot of people misidentify Mojave rattlesnakes because they have a slightly green color to them under the belief that Mojave rattlesnakes are green and snakes that are not green are not Mojave rattlesnakes. Throughout Arizona, a majority of the Mojave rattlesnakes you're gonna see in areas of high encounter rates are not green. Doesn't mean that there aren't green Mojave rattlesnakes, there are brilliantly green Mojave rattlesnakes. But looking at a snake and saying, well, that isn't green, it's not a Mojave, that's gonna lead you wrong. 
The other is behavior. There is a huge belief that Mojave rattlesnakes are super aggressive and other ones aren't. And people do make misidentifications all the time because they see a snake, it rattled at them and said, well, that must be a Mojave rattlesnake because I heard on the news or from my uncle that that's the aggressive one. So that's a Mojave. Any rattlesnake of any species, potentially highly defensive. Even snakes that are considered calm, like the black-tailed rattlesnake can burst into action trying to defend themselves and rattling loudly at a moment's notice. So if you see a snake and it rattles at you, it doesn't mean it's a Mojave or not. It means it's a rattlesnake. So just using those processes, you can eliminate one or the other from most circumstances and have a really good idea of what you're looking at. So now we're actually finally gonna look at some snakes and we're gonna look at five different characteristics that can help you differentiate between a Mojave rattlesnake and a Western Diamondback rattlesnake. And not one of these features is gonna be absolute 100% of the time. You should use multiple features to decide what the snake is. Both species have a wide gamut of variation across their range and can bleed into one or the other little bit. So look at the overall animal and don't get stuck on any one rule. The first are the tail bands. And we made a video about this another time that shows that this one is pretty variable and it leads you wrong a lot of the times. But in general, it can be a useful indicator. In general, Western Diamondback rattlesnakes have about the same width of black bands to white bands on their tails, while Mojave rattlesnakes tend to have white bands that are about twice as wide or larger than the black bands. Some of them don't really follow the rules at all. Like this Western Diamondback starts to get to where there's a lot more white than black on it. Check out this guy, about the same. Who knows what's going on there? Some of them are on, some of them aren't. There's a lot of different variation in these snakes. And some of them look really weird, like this one. So this one, if you're only looking at the tail banding, is purely Mojave, but that's a diamondback for sure. Uh, here's another one with tail banding is just kind of all over the place. And this is actually really common for the banding of the tail of the Western diamondback rattlesnakes to be so variable that they really aren't a very good single diagnostic for looking at the snake and telling what it is. You really have to look at the overall pattern and a lot of different features. And the change into that pattern tends to be more gradual with a Mojave rattlesnake, where it's a continuation of a tendency to become banded towards the tail, where a Western Diamondback, it very abruptly changes from the more classic pattern into that bright black and white pattern. The tail banding of a Western Diamondback often also looks to be broken up along a dorsolateral seam along the back, where the bands just don't really match up or it looks broken up. Mojave rattlesnakes bands can also be incomplete or broken, but it doesn't happen quite as often as with Western Diamondbacks. There's also the proximal rattle segment, which is the first segment where it touches the body. On a Western Diamondback rattlesnake, that is usually black. And on a Mojave rattlesnake, it might be half black and half yellow, entirely yellow or more of a brown color. The second one is the eye stripe. So there's a dark stripe that comes down from the eye in both species. With the Western Diamondback rattlesnake, it comes down more abruptly. It intersects with the mouth and ends before the corner of the mouth. While with the Mojave rattlesnake, it comes down and extends past the mouth and the stripe never actually touches the mouth. And this next one is probably the most popular and often cited way to tell the difference between the two. And it's also the most useless in real world application. And that is looking at the scale count between the eyes. On a Western Diamondback rattlesnake, between the ocular scales, which are these big ones right here that go over the eyes, there tend to be lots of little scales. It can be four or five or even more, more beaded looking scales that go there. With a Mojave rattlesnake, there tends to be two big ones sitting there. Sometimes there's a third one. Sometimes they're kind of mismatched and it's kind of hard to tell, but that's usually how it goes. The reason why this is a problem in the real world is that it requires that the observer get close enough to the snake to look between the eyes and count the scales there. So that's helpful in pictures, but if you don't know what you're looking at and you're looking at a snake and just wanna know what it is while you're there, do not try to get close enough to count the scales between the eyes. There are a lot of better ways to do it. Another topic, but it also causes some confusion here and false positives on Mojaves, is that black-tailed rattlesnakes have a similar scale construction on the head. And if you're looking at a snake's head and saying two scales means Mojave, black-tailed rattlesnakes very often lead people wrong. This next one is the one that I use the most and is most useful to me personally, and over time becomes one of the best go-tos to be able to differentiate, but it's also the most subjective. So use this in conjunction with other methods. And this is that the general appearance of a Western Diamondback rattlesnake tends to be more random and speckled 
in appearance than the Mojave rattlesnake that is much more orderly and consistently colored. The pattern of a western diamondback often is speckled with black. The diamonds are inexact. The white outline of them is all over the place. There's just a lot more of a random chaotic appearance to a western diamondback most of the time. And sometimes it can be very clean, but compared to the pattern that typically appears on a Mojave rattlesnake, you can see that there's quite a bit of difference. On the Mojave rattlesnake, it's a lot more of a clean pattern where the diamonds are more precisely formed with a clear outline on them and a more stable, clear base color. So while both snakes do have a pretty similar overall appearance, when you start looking at it that way, like this one or this one, this diamondback or this Mojave rattlesnake, or this diamondback that has a really clean pattern, or this Mojave rattlesnake that has an even cleaner pattern on it, you can start to get a sense for the general difference between these species. And lastly, and this is the biggest one and takes the most time to develop, is just getting a sense for the overall appearance of the animal, the sum of all these parts. So let's say you just met somebody that's never seen a dog before, and you're tasked with telling them the difference between a golden retriever and a yellow lab. How much discussion do you need to go between the length of hair and different types of ears and the color and size and all that stuff before your answer just becomes, well, you can tell because of the way it is. So it might seem frustrating right now because the differences between a Mojave rattlesnake and a diamondback seem so subtle, you might even be wondering what's the difference at all between having these two different species. But over time, using the features and getting some practice and positively identifying one or the other, you'll see things very differently in time. As you get practice identifying these snakes using those features, try this, pull back from looking at the features and see if you can identify it by just looking at the snake. Over time, you're gonna to start to see an emergence of the fact that Mojave rattlesnakes and Western diamondbacks really look nothing alike, but it's very subtle and it takes a lot of experience and a lot of practice, and even people that have seen hundreds or thousands of both of them still get it wrong from time to time. So those are certainly not all of the differences between them, but these are some ones that will help you and steer you in the right direction. And you'll get it right most of the time by using these and be able to develop that sense of identification through the general appearance of the animal. To help with that, we made a game and the link is in the comments or the description of wherever you're watching this video. This game is just a quiz where we show you a whole bunch of different snakes that are either a Western Diamondback or a Mojave and you are tasked with identifying it. Sometimes you'll be able to see the rattle in the tail and sometimes you won't. Sometimes you can see the scales on the head and sometimes you can't. Sometimes the color is an indicator, many times it is not. But this represents both species in different areas of the ranges in real world scenarios with wild snakes and will give you a lot of practice. So I hope you learned something, try it out. Let us know in the comments how you did on the first time and maybe try again in a few months and see if your score improved. We're probably gonna swap those pictures out occasionally just to keep it fresh, um, but we're interested in seeing how this helps, if it helps, and hopefully how your skills improve over time.